Welcome to the world's number one fitness business podcast for health club owners, gym managers, and fitness entrepreneurs. As always, this will be a great show as we have another expert to help your fitness business and your career. We'd like to thank our premier sponsor, Active Management, for supporting us. And we highly recommend becoming a member of Active Management to strengthen your business in 2016. There are loads of resources members receive, so join the Active Tribe today at www.activemgmt.com.au. Now that's enough from me. Let's welcome the show's amazing host, Chantal. What's on this week's show? Thanks, Harper, and hi, Tribe. We are back for another week of the show. This week, I was joined by JT from Active Management, and if you haven't yet heard, he has started a weekly Facebook show called JT in the Raw quite an interesting title. Well, he tells us a bit about the show and he explained to us why videos are such a powerful tool that you can use to connect with your clients. We also discuss the qualities of a great leader and he shares some research that I think you're going to find really useful to use with your business and with your teams. So we've got all that and much, much more coming up in this week's show. But before we get stuck into the show, this week's sponsor shout out goes to Active Management. Now you can get a free ebook download valued at $100. All you need to do is head over to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active. This month, we have an awesome prize for people who subscribe to the show notes at www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Do it and you may be this month's winner. Now it's time for this week's guest. Hey Tribe, it's that time again where I have the pleasure of welcoming back our regular guest JT from Active Management. Welcome to the show, JT. Hi Chantel, how are you? I'm very, very well, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. That's I'm doing good. great. That's good. Now, when we normally catch up, I normally uh, start by asking you what you've been up to in the last month, but uh, I know what you've been up to in the last month. Oh really? Yeah. What's that? What have you been doing? Are you stalking me? <laughs> it kind of it kind of will feel like that when I tell everyone about JT and the Raw. Ah uh, yes. What do you think? <laughs> I think it is a very interesting name that you've chosen. I must admit, when I <laughs> when I <laughs> when I first saw it, I was thinking, ah, is he like the new Jamie Oliver, Naked Chef? Like this is what <laughs> what's going through my mind. Oh hey oh, hey hey whoa. hey. <laughs> But now I know what it's all about and I know what you've been working on. I know where you are, I know what you're reading, and I know what you're listening to, and now I feel like I am a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure a few people probably wondered what JT in the Raw actually was, and it probably did turn their stomachs like a naked chef. But, no, look, quite seriously, I was listening to another podcast called uh, EO on Fire with John Lee Dumas, and he had a guest on talking about videos and how important they are to build relationships. Hey, 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 um, wait just a second for me because I'm going to interrupt you. I actually have some uh, stop the press news on that one because you just mentioned John Lee Dumas. Yep. Now, as it happens, he is actually going to be a guest on the Fitness Business Podcast in October. How cool is that? What a way to celebrate Podtober. Yeah, I reckon. Now, Tribe, if any of you don't know who JLD is, John Lee Dumas, he actually has a daily podcast show and he interviews entrepreneurs all across the globe. And I said daily podcast show, by the way. He makes six figures. I'm laughing because I can hear... JT's dog. Can you hear that dog barking? (laughs) Yeah. Dog dog barking. Normally it's on my end. (laughs) Nice. That's Mork and Mindy, everybody. Oh, wow. (laughs) Better edit some of that barking out, Harper, so that people don't think we're some sort of cheap little (laughs) thing here. Broadcasting from home. (laughs) Surely not. Now, let me go back to JLD because, as I mentioned, he's got a daily podcast show. He interviews entrepreneurs across the globe and, get this, he makes six figures from monetizing his podcast. He is practically podcast royalty uh, and we're going to be sharing how to set up a podcast, some tips that he's picked up from over 1,400 interviews with entrepreneurs and much, much more. How cool is that? Well, I reckon that's pretty cool, and I think the tribe should definitely tune into that show for sure. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So I'm sorry to interrupt. Go back to what you were saying before. 
hey, that was worthwhile interrupting for. <laughs> Look, I can't remember the guest's name, I and I wish I could. But anyway, he said it's really tough to sell anything online or in person if people don't know you and who you are. Mm-hmm. If they don't know you, they can't trust you. So why would they buy from you? Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? It sure does. He said the video is a really powerful way to build trust with your current as well as potential customers. As your customer can see you, that helps build the relationship, which got me thinking. For us to have more active management members, I need to start to do more videos. I want people to realise what we do each week for our members in regard to resources, researching and producing content. And I thought, wow, a video would help cut through in that message. I then needed a medium to get that message out. I continued a webinar platform, Google Hangouts, YouTube Live, Periscope, Snapchat, and Facebook Live. And remember, the last show we talked that I was on, we talked about we need to be on the platform that our customers were on. Remember that? Yeah, I sure do. So I went with Facebook Live and and just thought I'd dabble with it anyway and, and just see how we go. And it's been pretty amazing and pretty easy to use. The show's been reasonably successful, but we're still early days. Okay, so you started this weekly show to make membership sales. Is that right? Yes, that's exactly right. And no, I didn't make any sales in the first two weeks of the show. <sighs> But then, yes, in fact, we're now having two to four people get started every week on the back of JT in the Raw. Oh, my goodness. I'm still really struggling with the name. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) But it does cut through. So I'm I'm happy. But, yeah, two to four sales. It's not too bad, is it? it, Yeah, it does cut through. And, um, yeah, two to four sales is pretty good. On the back of seven minutes' work, I'd say that it would have to be a pretty good return on investment. Well, I've got to be honest, it is a bit more than seven minutes' work because there's a bit of a system behind it. And I know a magician shouldn't say how he does his tricks, but just for the fitness business tribe, I'll, I'll just explain to you how I do it. And the first step for me is I write out my bullet points for my seven-minute show. I've got my topics that I'm going to talk about and just write some bullet points. I then record the live video, which, of course, sits on my personal timeline on Facebook and I'm still playing with key phrases and titles to use around that video description. I then load the video onto the JT in the Raw YouTube channel. I then blog the video on the active management site. And finally, step five, I design a social media tile every week, pointing people to either watch live, subscribe to the channel, or check out the blog. So, yeah, it's probably a little bit more than seven minutes' work. Yeah, fair enough too. But, hey, we're all about sharing here on the show, so thanks for giving us your little um, behind-the-scenes look at the system that you're using. So basically you're saying that you're repurposing that video then across multiple platforms. That's really cool. Yeah. So my goal is obviously to build trust, but people – use different platforms to connect with either me or our brand. So that's kind of why we have to do it so that we can connect with people across the globe. That's cool. That's cool. So, um, JT, sorry, what what was the name of the show again? Oh, ha, ha, ha. (laughs) For those that are unaware, it is JT in the raw. Yeah, you're kind of freaking me out now. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry about that. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so when can people check it out? Uh, we're live every Friday, 8 a.m. Sydney time, which is 3 p.m. LA, 6 p.m. New York. And if you're in London, you can head a, get a hit of JT in the raw at 11 o'clock at night just before you go to sleep. Wow, those lucky, lucky Londoners. <laughs> Hey, JT, on a serious note, I think the message here is really clear. So basically what you're saying is use video to show who you are, who your membership team are, or say your personal training team, or even let's say in the example of a gym, say your front desk team. When your potential customers can see you and hear you in their own time, then you've got the opportunity to start a relationship. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 I agree with all of that. Yep. So the additional points are not just to make it a video. You then repurpose the video across multiple platforms and then you're going to gain extra reach. 
Yep, extra reach. That's what you want. Awesome. Perfect. That's great tips. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, JT. Now, let's keep going. I was hoping that you might be able to share with us today some leadership thoughts as you've just been conducting your middle of the year roundtables and you always walk away with those with some great insights from speaking with the fitness business owners. What have you got for us? Well, let me break leadership down into three areas today. Of course, there are loads more areas of leadership, but let's just look at three leadership traits. And I thought today we might explore creativity, resilience, and being charming. Mm, Interesting. Okay, let's start with being creative. Okay, so the first part of being creative as a leader is we have to be open to, to debate. A University of California study found that groups that questioned and even criticised ideas during a brainstorming session came up with more creative answers and solutions. So as a leader, we need to set an environment of trust to allow open critiquing of ideas. Secondly, we need to get out of our normal environment. When you leave the walls of your office, your mind is open to new ideas. So I'd suggest two or three 60-minute walks a week for every business owner just to think. And the next one flows on from getting out, and that is exercise. In 2013, Frontiers in Human Neuroscience published Exercise Helps Problem Solving, and a Stanford University study in 2014 found that exercise actually boosts brainstorming. So there's another reason for people not only to join our gym, but for us to use the product that we have as fitness. And finally, around this creativity theme, you need to talk. To be creative, you need to verbalise your thoughts to find solutions. So you need someone to talk to in order to get creative. Otherwise, you're going to get locked up because people will think you're crazy because you're talking to yourself. Okay, so to summarise that, so to get creative, we need to debate, we need to change our environment, we need to exercise, and we need to talk. Yep. Yep. So what about resilience? Tell us about that one. Okay, so again, let's try to summarise it into four simple points. Leaders don't whine. They don't whinge. They know it doesn't help anyone and, in fact, sets a really bad example for their team. So leaders channel their energy into making things better. They celebrate other people's success. We have to remember that a team's success does not undermine our own success. So as a leader, we need to cheer loudly for our team at every opportunity. And the resilient leader fights the daily grind, you know, that daily grind of going to work Mm. by always remembering the big picture. They focus on the long-term goals of the business. And finally, this type of trait leader means that they never forget being grateful. To be strong and resilient is a team effort and a leader always shares their gratitude with their team. Okay, so this time we're focusing on how to get better, Mm -hmm. cheering cheering on your team, remembering Mm -hmm. the big picture and showing gratitude. Yep. I like them. Okay, so this will be interesting because the last one that you mentioned was to be charming and I have to admit I never kind of considered that as a leadership trait. Yeah, I guess it's not a word we bandy around much these days, is it? It's a bit bit of an old-fashioned word. Mm. So let's think about, again, four points around being charming. And the first thing is we need to create relationships by adding value, whether that is a relationship with somebody that we work with, someone we're trying to sell a membership to, somebody we are trying to build a relationship with and to help us market our product. What we want to be able to focus on here is adding value. Small talk won't make you memorable to your audience. Always think, how can you help the person or the people you are with? Listening. A leader spends more time listening to learn more. That's a really good trait in order to be charming. Now, if an obstacle does arise, it's not the end of the world for a leader. A charming leader sees this obstacle as simply a detour, not a roadblock. And this will not surprise any one of the tribe 
To increase your charm as a leader, focus on your body language. Smiling and eye contact is going to break down all barriers. That'll make you a charming leader. That makes a lot of sense, JT. So basically, to summarise, to increase our charm as a leader, we need to smile, we need to have eye contact, we need to listen, add value to our relationships and see obstacles as detours, not as roadblocks. Yeah, that's spot on. In fact, Chantelle, I heard a great quote. That would be a nice way for us to put a full stop on the discussion around leadership, and that's this. Managers and bosses will generally clear the road with their team. A leader will always and consistently clear the road for their team and then go the extra mile. And there is never a traffic jam on that extra mile. I love that. That is a perfect quote to finish on. Thank you so much for those tips, JT. No worries. I can't wait to see you get that quote into one of my tweetables. Yeah, (laughs) I will be doing my best. I will be doing my best. Hey, um, it was great having you on the show again. Hey, my pleasure. And thanks for squeezing me in around all the many superstars and rock stars you get to interview these days. Well, we are very popular these days. So, you know, (laughs) there will always, always be a spot for you though, JT. Uh, Well, when you're Paid up sponsor, that helps, doesn't it? <laughs> as long as you're not in the raw, it's okay. <laughs> no, I'm definitely not in the raw, although normally I'm sitting next to you. I'm not sitting next to you today. Changing um, it up But today. I'm not in the raw. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for joining us once again. We can't wait to see you again next time. You're welcome, and I love being on the show, so thanks very much. Thanks, JT. The Fitness Business Podcast is very appreciative of our podcast partners. Here's a quick word from one of our partners. Rex Roundtables is a powerful forum in Europe, the US and Australia for club owners and personal training business owners. In Australia, Justin Tamsett from Active Management runs the Rex Roundtables under the brand Industry Leaders Roundtable. In the show notes for today's episode, you'll find a YouTube link for you to watch and hear more about the roundtables. This 90 second video is a great explanation, so don't forget to check it out in today's show notes. It's time for the Fitness Business Podcast Wrap. Tribe, here are my top takeaways from this week's show with JT. He said that video is a powerful way to build trust with your current and your potential customers. He reminded us that repurposing the video across multiple platforms allows us to gain extra reach. He also said that three leadership traits are being creative, being resilient, and being charming. And he said that leaders channel their energy into making things better. Tribe, you may recall that last week's guest was Sean Greeley, the founder and CEO of Net Profit Explosion. And Sean has generously given the Fitness Business Podcast a ticket for his upcoming mega training event valued at $499. Now, you can win a ticket to this awesome event. All you need to do to win is subscribe to the show notes at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. If you've already subscribed previously, then you're automatically in the draw. It's that easy. So the mega training event will be held in Australia, the US and the UK. So if you are the lucky winner, you can just choose your closest city. You have until August 25th to enter. So make sure that you subscribe today. That is fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. And I want to say a huge thank you to Sean and the team from NPE for this fantastic prize. Quick Fire 5. Tribe, I am joined today by the co founder and CEO of Hyrology, Adam Robinson. Welcome to the show, Adam. Great to be here. Now, are you ready for our Quick Fire 5 questions? I sure am. Okay, let's do it. Why do you do what you do? Because I love uh, creating and building businesses, and I enjoy helping other people do the same thing. And what's the best advice that you've ever received? Uh, it was actually from a from a Harvard Business Review article I read that was research on whether it was, you know, did you do you want to be rich or do you want to be king? And the advice is, if you want to be in charge of everything, by all means, keep control of everything and be king. But if you want to build an asset that's worth any money, you, you need to start delegating. So the choice is yours. Great advice. And what's a personal habit that helps you become better at what you do? 
Well, so much of what I do is pattern recognition. And so the more data I have, the better, which is why I set aside an hour every day for reading in the morning. And what's one book that you'd recommend and why? Uh, not really a business book, but I, I think the, the best history book ever written. Uh, it won the Pulitzer Prize in 94. And uh, it's a biography of uh, Robert Moses uh, called The Power Broker by a guy named Robert Caro. Sorry, Pulitzer Prize in 74. Uh, and it's about uh, the man who built about 70% of all the public works projects in Manhattan and Brooklyn in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, it's fascinating lesson on power dynamics at the highest possible level. Wow. And tell us, Adam, why should our tribe come back next week and listen to your main show? Because you're operating in such a hyper-competitive market in the fitness industry. And, and so people are really your only source of sustainable competitive advantage. Uh, and if you want to create that for your business, you should tune in because your competitor will be. I reckon that's a pretty good reason. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Quick Five Five. Thanks for having me. I can't wait to bring you that show with Adam next week. Thanks for joining me for another week of the Fitness Business Podcast. And remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Great show this week that you should be suffering DOMs, delayed onset mind soreness, as you are overloaded and that's when your mind is strengthened. You and your business have been strengthened thanks to the amazing support of our premier sponsor, Active Management. Check out www.activemgmt.com.au only if you want to strengthen your business and your leadership. Don't forget all today's links and notes are found at www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com where you can also subscribe and never miss a show and maybe win a prize. Next week is another incredible guest with Chantal, so get ready for more fit-bispiration. <laughs>